Hello. Welcome back to another episode of Women in Sport. I'm Rianne Evans. Thank you very much for joining me. This week, we are looking at table tennis. Never, ever take your eye off the ball. For some reason, ping pong can bear a natural to me. See, any idiot can play. So I started playing it all the time. I'm Maggie Mulhern and I've been playing table tennis for 33 years. <laughs> uh, I'm Catherine Venus. I've been playing table tennis for 15 years, I think. Brilliant. So both of you have, it's safe to say, been in the field of table tennis for a considerable amount of time. Um, Have you seen the game change much since you first started all those years ago? Yes, definitely. (laughs) The whole whole thing's um, changed. When I first started, um, we played best of three sets up to 21 and everyone had five serves. And we started with a smaller ball, a 38 mil ball. And over the years, it's changed. Uh, we've now got a slightly bigger ball. It's a 40 mil ball. Mm-hmm. And we play best of five up to 11. And everybody has two serves each. So that's been the biggest, biggest change. And what's the main impact of those changes, would you say? Matches are a lot quicker now. Um, more yeah. interesting mm-hmm. for people to watch. Playing yeah. up to 21 was a bit, a bit it's boring long, yeah. as it is now. It's quite long. <laughs> and you need to like serve five... T- five um, times in a row so which means like um it's kind of like really difficult to um think of tactics Mm -hmm. if it's like five unless and like if it's two you can just change it right away you can you you can sort of change your game to adapt to the other person yeah yeah awesome um so let's talk about uh your backstories then so how what was it about table tennis that drew you in to begin with um, I'm go first. Yeah. <laughs> was mine, was, mine was a silly, silly story. Um, I'd broken my ankle and um, the way I'd broken it, I didn't have a lot of mobility in it. And um, the village that I live in, I live in Foxdale, I knew that they had a table tennis club. So I decided to go along and join 33 years ago. And yeah, that's where I sort of started mine. What is it about table tennis that has kept you with it for so long? I don't know really. Uh, <laughs> I think to start off with, it's all about improving, trying to get better, um, and then you sort of level off, <laughs> or you go back a few steps. Um, it's just the fact that once you got to a certain standard, you got to um, be selected to play for the island. So I've played all over in various tournaments. Uh, I think that's what keeps your interest in, really. Yeah, yeah. yeah so uh, for me... Um, well, my brother was a player when he was in uh, when he was in uni, and then um, I started like playing table tennis when I was um, not proper table tennis, but just on the kitchen table, like a dining table. So he started um, teaching me on that, and then I kind of like started to like it because of my brother, and that's that's it really. Before I don't really like it; I like other sports, but then. I found that I'm better in table tennis than all the, the, the other sports and I'm kind of tiny which works for me because I don't really need to be tall so yeah so then I just stick with it and then I, now it's been I've been doing all it all my life and do you yeah. play for the island team as well yeah I did yeah that's why um that's the first thing I looked um looked for in the island when I first came here Four years ago, I um I looked for a table tennis club, and from then, yeah, Maggie, um, saw me, and then yeah, she adopted me. Scooped you up. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, now I have to ask. It's probably a really irritating question, but what's the difference between calling it table tennis and what's the difference between calling it ping pong? Ooh, it's, it's, yeah. Go on. <laughs> I think it's um, the ping pong one is like um, it's just more of a hobby than the sport. Mm-hmm. Table tennis is the, the actual sport, name. yeah. Okay. But if it's ping pong, it's more of um, different unofficial bats okay. or tables just in the park, something mm. like that. That's ping pong, I right. think. That's why. Yeah, I that's know. what I would yeah. say it was. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
What are numbers like for girls of all ages playing table tennis on the Isle of Man? Not so good. We do struggle to mm. to get girls. Um, we're sort of lacking between... We have a few um, under 12s and under 18s. And then apart from probably Kay and Becky, we've got a massive big gap then. Um, our next ones are vets, which are over over 40. Um, we've got a few ladies playing in the over 60s, uh, but we have got quite a, a big gap. We tend to lose them. It's the same with, with the boys and the girls. Once they get to their teens, mm. we lose them and they go off to university. Yeah. Sometimes they come back, sometimes they don't. Yeah, a few a few other sports have said that around that age, that's where the dip comes in. Um, but do you find that, that people are going off to university and continuing with it at university? Yes, yeah. They do. And if they do come back, they come back at the best standard for us. Brilliant. I don't know about other schools, but I've seen at Balakameen that they've introduced table tennis into the PE curriculum, which um, which I'm assuming must be good for sort of trying to develop younger players to take up the sport. Yeah, I think in the sort of the, the secondary schools, if you've got a teacher who's interested in table tennis or plays table tennis, you've got quite a good um, chance of it being in, involved. Um, I think at Balakameen School, one of our um, first division players has just started there as a teacher. So I think he might have something to, to do with that getting uh, table tennis in, yes. Oh, brilliant. That's really good. What do you think needs to be done to encourage more girls and boys to take up the sport on the island? I think the problem on the island is they've got a choice of so many sports. Mm. And if you're good at one racket sport, you're good at all of them. Mm. So you're always fighting. Um, to get the kids into your your sport, uh, you've got badminton yeah. and squash, tennis, tennis and, yeah. and squash. So you're always fighting for those those few. Um, I don't know. It always seems to be table tennis that loses out. Really, I don't know how we can make it more attractive to them. It's an indoor sport. You don't have to worry about the weather. Uh, you don't get cold. You don't get sunburn <laughs> yeah. like you're doing tennis. Um, yeah, I just don't know how we go about making it more attractive. Um, who would you say is your arch nemesis that you're competing against in the racket world? I'd say tennis, isn't it? Football. Boys, we lose football. Um, badminton's very big on the island, so a few of our players do badminton and table tennis. But if it comes to which one would you like to pick? We tend to lose out to, to badminton a little bit more, I suppose. It's a shame because, I mean, I love playing table tennis. Um, we have a very old and rickety table back <laughs> home in the garage. But, like, the amount of concentration that yeah. it takes because, obviously, just because you're working with a smaller area. Yeah. But um, the skill set that you have to yeah. have... You know, and the pressure, I would imagine, in those tournaments. Yeah. I mean, let's talk about the, the big tournament that you've uh, been involved with recently at the NSC. It went very well. Um, we had seven countries competing in that from um, under 15s, under 18s, and then our senior mm. players. Um, I was only the organiser and tournament referee, while Kay actually <laughs> played in the tournament. I did. <laughs> Brilliant. How did you get on? Um... We um, what, what did you we beat finish? Guernsey? Yeah, we beat Guernsey, <laughs> um, and but then um, we lost to the other countries. But in terms of like um, personal um, performance, we feel like um, we've performed well. It's just that because um, we're kind of used to just playing the same people here on the island, and unlike England, where it's really big and they've got loads of different people to play with, so I think that's something that's um, an advantage for them, really. Mm. So um, yeah, it it was um, it was a great um, it was a great tournament, and um, and now we're kind of like uh, starting to go out more. So that, um, yeah, we'll experience more and um, try to play other people. Mm. And, yeah. I mean, that's the main thing, isn't it? That you're happy with your performance in the tournament. But, I mean, that's another consistent thing that people from all the different sports I've spoken to have said is that there's a ceiling on the island because you end up playing. It's You're just recycling the same players and the same teams. So there's only really so good you can get. Um, So then it's down to sort of finding the funding to leave the island or bring people over to help you improve so 
Um, is that how often does the island team get away to compete? Is that a regular occurrence, or is that something you're struggling with a bit? It's um, it's getting regular at the minute because um, because we have um, like just last week um, la- this weekend um, we just uh, went to Liverpool to um, do the British League and it's um, it's four times a year that we go there. And it's it's a really good standard, and um, yeah, and that's something that um, that's really good for all of us who go to. So that's brilliant. Nice. Yeah. Um, what's the main difference you find with playing teams in England? Oh, they're just really focused. It's just so different because they're so used to different techniques, and um, yeah, just different techniques, and um, like their concentration is really. I'm strong as well, so that's something that I think we need to really work on, because there were games where we're like, um, we're really close in terms of skills, and um, in terms of how we play other people, but then we can't just get get it over the line. Mm-hmm. We're always close, but we can't win it because mm-hmm. of like, of the pressure, because of because um, we just tend to just snap out of the game, yeah. something like that. So. Yeah, I think they're just really strong mentally. Yeah, and I guess that that sort of dealing with pressure and performing under pressure yeah. will come from um, having more exposure yeah. to harder games on a more regular basis yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, so that would that be the main thing that you think um, you as a player you need to work on? Yeah, definitely. Mm. Yeah, because in terms of skills, I mean, like we can always train, and other coaches come over here to um, proper trainers, which is really good. It's just really um, having that experience Mm. and playing other people. And do you both coach and um, is it umpire or ref in table tennis? You can have both. The umpire is actually in charge of the table, turning the the numbers over to score the points. Um, Tournament referee is in charge of the whole whole event. Do you both coach as well? I coach. Mm. Kay just plays. Yeah. Okay. So, um, <laughs> what is a major coach killer? You know, something very simple, but when it if it happens, you know, mistakes happen to everyone. But what's the one thing that gets you every time you're watching and you're just like, oh no, <laughs> <laughs> we've worked on that. Don't actually do as you've asked them yeah. to do, <laughs> and you can see what they they should be doing. And then they come off because you can have a chat with them when you're playing um, at the end of each change of ends. You can have a chat with them um, and you say, I'd like you to do this, that and the other. And they come back and they give you feedback. I should be doing this. And then they go back on and do exactly the same as they've done in the previous set. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Oops. Let's talk about, um, or both of you actually, Maggie, as well. Let's talk about career highlights. So what would you say has been the pinnacle moment so far in your table tennis career that one moment that really stands out where maybe you were massively under pressure or you were the underdog and you took the win or or maybe you didn't take a win but you were just really proud of your own performance mine's when i first won the island um, ladies singles championships back in 1994 (laughs) um i'd played the lady i was against in the final in my group and i'd actually lost against her and then went on to beat her in straight sets in the final. So that was that must have been such highlight. a good feeling. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, it's the um, I'd say the island games. I didn't win gold, but I was able to get the bronze medal. So for that's for doubles and women's singles. But the um, the women's singles, I played um, um a woman from Gotland who have been playing the island games f- for like forever mm. and I played her then and I was like I've got nothing to lose mm. I'll just do it do do what I can and then it just happened and yeah I won that and got my my bronze medal in that so I think that's like fantastic yeah <laughs> sometimes that situation where you literally have nothing to lose um yeah. massively helps because you kind of go in a bit more relaxed yeah, um, yeah that's yeah. so true yeah. brilliant both major achievements that's awesome do you prefer playing singles or doubles <laughs> i like both actually yeah. i do like playing doubles some people don't like to play doubles some people can't play doubles but i must admit i do like to play doubles mm-hmm. yeah um for me as well because because you 
you have um, someone else <laughs> to rely on <laughs> not just yourself yeah <laughs> to blame <laughs> yeah so it's not just yourself yeah have you ever seen any awkward moments where players have had a spat during a game <laughs> oh plenty, <laughs> plenty. <laughs> you know when you, you, you're in a game of doubles um, and the other pair start arguing with each other you'll go to your partner we've got this one <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's talk about harder times during your um table tennis careers. Have you ever had any gut wrenching moments where maybe you just feel like you let yourself down or you just missed out on something? I should have asked that one first and saved the <laughs> nice one for after. <laughs> I don't know really. Um it's, I suppose there's been lots of times at Island Games and World Championships where um, you know, oh, I could have won that if I'd just done this or just done that. Yeah. Um, but I must admit, I'm not one to sort of dwell on your losses. A lot of players um, will come off the table and they'll just go through every point that they've played and they'll keep on talking <laughs> about it. Mm-hmm. I come off, they oh, it's finished, what's next? Yeah. You know, I don't sort of dwell on what I've lost or or not really yeah. that sounds like um, a fairly healthy attitude because people can obsess over the mistakes can't they and then instead of learning from them I mean I'm I'm bad for it as well um, but it, instead of learning from them just getting really like closed in and yeah. just sucked into this kind of negative bubble so I think it's a very good idea to be like water off a duck's back you know losses yeah. all happen You've just got to crack on. And also, you very casually mentioned World Championships. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to uh, elaborate a bit on that? Um, it was the World Team Championships. I've played in three of them. Um, unfortunately, since Kay's come to the island, they've changed the rules of qualification and we can't actually qualify to get into the World Championships anymore. Oh, why not? Um, you have to actually go through the European things to qualify, whereas... Um, in years gone past, if you wanted to play in the World Championships, you always picked ones that was quite near home. You could just enter a team and off you go. But now you have to go through qualification. Um, it was getting too big, basically. Uh, there were very few countries that actually had the facilities to, to host it. So now they're trying to cut it down. So there's only like 96 women's teams and 96 men's teams. So it's cut an awful lot of the smaller countries um not just ourselves guernsey jersey even scotland are struggling now to actually qualify um for the world championships but no they were great events you saw all these players that you'd only ever seen in the table tennis books and on the television and then suddenly they were this close to you you know (laughs) and that was amazing uh, experience did you ever get starstruck not really no i I mean (laughs) yes you sort of think from afar oh, that's that's my favorite and someone will say well go and talk to him no no i don't want to don't want to have be dilute you know um don't want to be let down if you like if it's somebody right, yes. you know what i mean they're sort of on yeah, a pedestal and you don't want to push them off because yeah, yeah. when they talk to you they don't sound as though you imagine them to, to talk or um they're not very nice or something so no never all do. those years of dreams just crushed yeah, <laughs> yeah. oh he's in, he's in the queue next to me you haven't yeah. getting sort of food but no, i'm not going to talk to him <laughs> oh, if i was you mag i would have asked for a photo <laughs> no it was never we didn't have mobile phones in those days uh, when we were playing. <laughs> you had to actually take a camera with you <laughs> That was a long time ago. <laughs> Just rub salt in that wound. <laughs> um, so, do do you see the Isle of Man eventually getting back to competing in World Championships? What what do we need to do to get there? It depends on the qualification, really. I mean, our the standard that we play at this moment in time, we won't be able to go through the qualifications. Um, if in the future they change the rules again, um, it would be nice to to send teams because I say it is such a good experience Um, but yeah at this point in time um, I can't see it happening. Going back to sort of um, professional players and your favourite players can you watch table tennis fairly easily on the telly? Um, That's a I usually just watch it in the website. It, it's the um, International Table Tennis Federation website, and um, there's uh, a regular uh, there, there are regular tournaments all over the world. So usually the professional ones play there, and we just watch it from there. Mm-hmm. And um, there's one time where I was able to watch it, uh, watch the world's um, 
Championship live in London, which is really amazing. And yeah, I was proper fangirling on everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. The speed that they play at, oh uh, yeah, is yeah, phenomenal. It, it doesn't make it very television friendly. That's, that's true, actually. Sport, yeah, because they keep they brought the larger ball in to try and slow the rallies down to make it more spectator friendly, and that's it didn't work. The top players just get used to whatever you do. Yeah. They've talked about maybe putting the net higher, but that hasn't sort of come in yet. Mm. Um, but yeah, it is just the, the, the speed and it um, doesn't get an awful lot of coverage on the normal television. Yeah, under, yeah, yeah. under normal. You have to go off to your different channels. But mm. uh, yeah, it's a shame, really. That's interesting. I didn't. I had no idea they'd taken steps, like introduced a bigger ball to try and increase spectators. Mm. Um, when you play on the island, do you get many people watching? Not on mm. for our local league matches. Yeah. We, we get a few parents down to watch the juniors. Um at the home countries a couple of weeks ago, yes, we did have a lot of spectators down. Yeah. And it was nice to see that the hall yeah. was full. People would pop in. They'd say, oh, I wonder what's going on. And people came down, especially people um, who maybe played table tennis in the past or sons and daughters have played. Um, yeah, I've had nothing but good, good comments about it. With people from each sport that come in, I always ask, is there an annoying stereotype? Um, and so, for example, when... Uh, running theme with with the basketball girls with the rugby girls with the football girls all of them said that irritating stereotype since they were kids has been that you've got to be like a butch lesbian to play those sports (laughs) and they are still kind of lingering around today now I haven't heard anything like that about table tennis but um, is there is there an irritating stereotype surrounding the sport that you're aware of I don't think so yeah because apart from your international tournaments um leagues uh, men and women play equal yeah you don't have separate men's league or or women's league like on the island we just play in teams that's really interesting and that seems to be the same with athletics because men and women train together and boys and girls train together yeah. and the coverage is then the same you know you see it with the the world championships for for the athletics men and women are competing at exactly the same time so there isn't a massive there may be a gap in pay still but in terms of coverage yeah it's yeah. much it's a much more level playing field so it sounds like that's the same that's very applicable yeah, here is, too yeah. 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 yeah yeah well that's a very good thing okay so i always ask this of everyone have you ever had any um, I don't know if you watch Friends, but Red Ross moments. So moments where you've just got really wound up during a game. You've crushed a ping pong ball, a table <laughs> tennis ball with anger, was... crushed it to dust. No, I haven't. I must admit, I don't tend to sort of lose my temper. I don't stamp my feet or bash the bat anywhere. They'll cost too much to, <laughs> <laughs> to damage your bat. Hey, if you, I haven't seen you screaming and shouting in the corner. No. Oh. No. <laughs> no, I'm trying to. No, I'm trying to think, but there's none really. I would get upset, but not like. Not like angry. We you do, don't seem yeah. very angry. <laughs> we do have a few of the the male players that get extremely upset and shout and scream. And What's the worst thing you've seen? Um, bats getting thrown against the wall. Um, <laughs> barriers getting kicked. Yeah. <laughs> Um, no bats thrown at heads. Actually, I was unpacking one time and it wasn't deliberate um, on the table behind me. Suddenly this bat came that way and he'd gone for a shot. And because he was hot and sweaty, oh the bat had just flown out of his hand and sort of came past. But um, I haven't seen anyone injured deliberately during a table tennis match. Have either of you two ever had any freak accidents during a game where... Have you ever accidentally taken a bat to the face or got a, a table tennis ball to the eye? <laughs> I get hit by table tennis balls all the time. They sting rather than yet yeah, being sort of hit on the cheekbone. Um, I'm just no long-lasting damage though. No, nothing. No, no, it would just be like simple ankles, maybe. Yeah, your doubles partner standing on your foot yeah, when you're trying to like move. That. Oh, your doubles. <laughs> sometimes double partners can hit you. Yes, the they bat, can do. Yeah. Or they forget to move and you go into these. You don't and then you hit them. Yeah, I was. Um, them. I, went, I think when I was um, in primary, I was playing doubles and I hit one of my. Uh, I hit my partner and then my back broke because 
I hit him so. <laughs> <laughs> Accidents yeah. like that do I'm happen. Never of my bad partner, really. Yeah. Do you have them, um, you know, like in football, if someone scores a goal and they can go and like slide in their knees or, <laughs> or they do like, I'm a little teapot, Sean, or something like that. Do you have any winning traditions really yourselves? Yeah, like, <laughs> like, well, we do like, we, ce- we celebrate um, during, uh, on every point. Mm. Yeah, especially on a really big, um, a really big game or, uh, yeah. Um, but like kneeling down or standing on top of tables that would be like telly levels yeah so yeah yeah. and world championships so you can see players standing on top of the table god i'd be so worried it was just gonna like (laughs) close in do you know what i mean i'm not really thinking of that they're just really happy and then sometimes people would rip their shirts off (laughs) yeah i I remember there's one chinese guy who you think did that and he was reprimanded or something for ripping his shirt (laughs) 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 yeah it's the excitement of winning slapped wrists Mm. yeah (laughs) That's about it, really. No slides or something. Mm. I guess you'd get burnt pretty badly if you tried to slide. (laughs) Um, Do you have any pre-match rituals, um, you know, to sort of calm your nerves before a big game? Do you listen to music or anything? No, I don't do anything like that. We're supposed to do our warm-ups to sort (laughs) of, you know, get your muscles warm and get yourself relaxed and that. And do keep trying to drum it into the players that they should have their own pre-match warm-up. But it's, yeah, quite difficult to get them to uh, do that. They think they look silly if they're doing it and nobody else is doing it. I think that's what the problem is. I'm just picturing Forrest Gump now, you know, with <laughs> half the table up just for hours. <laughs> That's probably a really annoying thing to say, sorry. <laughs> um, Kay, what about you? Do you, ha- do you have any um, pre-game rituals? Um, I used to listen to music just to... Because I, I really get nervous on games and when I'm nervous, well, Maggie knows this, that I get stiff and I can't really move or anything so um um yeah before i used to um listen to music but um yeah but now i just try to like talk to other people Mm -hmm. just to like get my head um out of thinking that i'm gonna play next to get out of your own head yeah yeah. so yeah Yeah. no that can definitely help because you see different play you know some people will want to be completely on their own and focused and other people would much rather be interacting with people you know it's keeping distracted yeah um what sort of music would you listen to uh all sorts of it and more of them the like the ballad ones <laughs> yeah. really see that's a really original answer but, you know because you get the standard like oh eminem lose that, yeah, yourself no, <laughs> what sort no. of ballads i'm just thinking like it, it's just, share and stuff now it's more of um, no, more of filipino songs really awesome. <laughs> so, <laughs> nice yeah but that would make me calm because if it's like upbeat and stuff um i I don't know. It can push you too far the other way. Yeah, yeah. And that would make me really more nervous rather Mm -hmm. than calm. So, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) No, that's good. You'll have to give me um, the name of one of the songs (laughs) and and I'll put it it into this. Uh, What would you like to see for the future of uh, table tennis on the island? Really love our own premises somewhere. Um, At the moment, we have to hire. We use the NSC. Um, if the players want to practice, they have to go and book a table. Um, getting any spare time at the NSC is really difficult. Um, it's just used by everybody. Just to have our own premises somewhere where you could go 24-7 and yeah. just be able to practice, have visiting teams coming over and just pick your time rather than having to rely on when you can get into the NSC or when you can get into the schools and a lot of the schools don't have tables um, now. So yeah, that that that's my, that's top of my wish yeah. list to have our own premises somewhere. I hadn't thought about what an impact that would have actually, because you're so right. I mean, it is, uh, the NSC is obviously a very popular place and, you yeah. know, not being able to just have somewhere to go and practice whenever you want. Yeah, that's bad. Um, <laughs> well, how, how, how do you change that? What needs to be done? We just need some rich person to leave us lots of money. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we've looked at premises in the past, but they're just so expensive mm. um, to go and rent a hall or, or something where you could just have your tables up all the time. Yeah. Um, tables get damaged going up and down, putting away in store cupboards, taking the nets on and off. So just to be able to have them up all the time and just go in. 
um, it would be great. But yeah, it's going to take a lot more money than we've got as an association. How, how does the funding work with the Alman Table Tennis Association? Um, a lot of it is collected through um, team fees. So when you play your league matches, everyone has to pay a team team fee depending whether you're a senior or a junior um, sports council we get a gra- um, grant or a load of money from them and um, they're just changing the way that it's actually allocated so this year has been great we've had actually more money to play with this year um, that's good and then trying to get sponsorship again can be quite quite difficult because mm. um, the same or all the sports are chasing the same sponsors if you like uh, so yeah, it's only if they're interested in table tennis or some of them play that maybe you get sponsorship that way. That is difficult and it does seem to come back round to those those main sports. I mean, with a lot of the other girls that I've spoken to, there's only like one island team, you know, and, and it is because they're competing with... Mm. I mean, I, I play netball and that's such a highly participated sport and you feel bad when women's cricket only has one team women's basketball only has one team as does rugby you know and it's like how how are how are girls supposed to pursue these sports that they love when there's no one to play against so it's um it's really tricky one unfortunately what would you change to sort of draw people in do you think i think we need more volunteers to actually help on the coaching side and maybe give up their time to go into the schools Mm -hmm. and not having to rely on a teacher being in a school to to help them um it's just have it's time isn't it it's people just having the time um even though i'm retired i'm still busy don't have a lot of time to go into schools um and lot, most of our players i think still work full time we've got yeah. the odd retired person but again they have their other interests so yeah it's just people being willing to give up their time to do that little bit extra mm-hmm. even if it's just um getting some coaching qualifications and running a group somewhere in their area of area of the island that's i said that's the basics it's it's people giving up their time ideally if you could be set up anywhere where would you want to be on the island if with your consistent clubhouse oh douglas. <laughs> well i don't live in douglas i live in, in foxdale um and the people who live out of douglas travel every week into Douglas to play the matches but if you say right we're going to do a social event somewhere out of Douglas you can't get people to move out of Douglas so I suppose ideally it would have to be in Douglas to get people to actually um, come and participate and ideally just like a a large hall basically yeah just I don't know warehouse or somewhere uh, with parking where we can just I don't know put six eight tables up Do you would just be up yeah. all the time and just just be ours yeah and kate what would you like for the future of the sport on the island um it'd be nice if we have like um more players really um at the minute we have really loads of children starting to um to do trainings and um yeah playing leagues which is really good and it's just um trying to just keep them on the sport and just um and grow old with it i think and yeah that, that should be really nice because like what maggie said earlier um, there's a really massive gap between them um, like their age group and then my age group and then my age group with the younger ones so after me it's like the next one will be 18 year olds year olds so it's quite a big gap mm. that'd be nice if they just um every kid would just carry on playing because it's, it's a really nice sport. Yeah, well, it's promising to hear that at, at the grassroots level, you know, kids are playing and yeah, because yeah. it is a fun game. Yeah, it's a yeah. really fun game, and and I've always found it's um, it's a, it's a family friendly game as well. Yeah. So you've got it covers all areas. You've got the highly competitive side, and you've got just spending time yeah. with your friends and playing. You know, yeah. it's great fun. Um, do you have a sort of casual league for people who don't necessarily want to compete but just want to? have a play we don't unfortunately because of um the way our leagues run they're all um played on a a wednesday and friday nights at the nsc um 
the, the only thing that we can offer people at the moment, if they just want to come along and have a, a casual game, uh, we do run a drop-in session at the Book and School on Tuesday night, 7 till 9, and that's open to anybody, whatever age. Uh, they just come along, um, and there's people there, a um, bit coaching if they want, but there's people of all ages there to actually come and just have a, a fun session with. Um, and how can people get in touch with you if they want to do that or, or think about um, competing? They can contact us through our Facebook page. Um, get quite a lot of um, contacts that just, way. Just remind me again um, the name of your official Facebook page. I suppose it's just the Isle of Man Tennis Association, Tennis Association yeah. Facebook page. Um, we have a, a website as well. Um, but yeah, the Facebook page is probably the easiest. Um, or what a lot of people do as well, they ask at the NSC and my name and number's given out and then they phone me. Um, which is fine as well. And just to finish on, um, what is it that you love about table tennis and what would you say to people to encourage them to take up the sport? Hmm. What I like um, is the fact that I've made so many friends all around the world through Ireland Games and other various tournaments that I've played in. Um, and it doesn't matter how often, you might see them once every two years at Ireland Games, but it's just that type of friendship that... Um, you just carry on the conversation that you've you finished with sort of two years ago. So for me, it's the friendships, um, the company, I suppose, going out yeah. um, in the evening, having a chat with, with people. Um, I can't say about keeping fit, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's, uh, so it's the friendship for me, I think, yeah. Yeah. Um, I feel like uh, it's... I think it's a sport that um, any a um, any age group can do, because like in the league we have people who are, who are like seventy plus in their eighties. Yeah, or in their eighties. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's impressive. Yeah, yeah, so everyone can really play it. It it doesn't need to be in a competitive level or a professional level. So um, yeah, so anyone can really enjoy it, and. Um, Again, it's just um, setting up the table. You don't need to have a massive um, place or, um, yeah, a, a, spa a massive space as long as you can fit a table and you'll be fine to do it. So it's like it's like for everyone, really. It's very inclusive. Yeah, yeah. Talking about inclusivity, um, Kay, you were saying it's for people of all ages. Um, so do you, do you see many families playing? We have got a fair few actually um what normally happens is um the kids will start in the manx youth games and then hopefully we get them on into junior league and eventually into the senior league and then mum or dad comes along to pick them up oh quite fancy having a go at this and then we get dads involved and um, we've got quite a few fathers and sons i think we've got one mum and her two daughters playing um so no it, it's really nice actually so it is a family a family affair. It is a family affair, but also on the other scale of things, because table tennis really is massively inclusive. I have seen so so many people like you have you heard of beer pong? Yes. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> but it's like you know uh, the equivalent with table tennis. So it really is for any occasion yeah. and for e yeah. <laughs> for everyone. <laughs> so what more could you want? <laughs> And that's all for this week's episode. I shall leave you with one of Kay's chosen ballads that she listens to to get her psyched up and into the right frame of mind before a big table tennis competition. Enjoy. Someday you're gonna realise One day you'll see this through my eyes even be there I'll be happy somewhere even if I can